Faith. Do you have real faith? Do you know what faith really is? The more I talk to people and listen to people from different church groups, the more I realize that a lot of people don't understand what biblical faith really is. And no, faith is not just believing that God is real, that He exists. Because the demons also believe it. James 2 verse 19 says, You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. So how do you know that your faith is real? That you will be saved, that you will go to heaven? This question is so important and you need to ask yourself, is my faith real? You need to be sure because your salvation depends on it. And this is what we're going to talk about in this video. What is true biblical faith in God? Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into the video. Now, just very quick, if it's the first time that you're here on my channel, I'm Daniel Moritz and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle, where we preach biblical truth and where we stick to the Bible and not what we just want to preach and say. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please consider it and also tick that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future videos. Now, to understand biblical faith, there are four things that you need to know. Let's start with the first one. There are two aspects of faith. Believing in the facts, in the truth of the Bible is not the only aspect. You also have to trust in it. Believing in it intellectually, understanding, okay, it is true. Jesus did really exist. All the facts in here, true. That's one aspect. But then you also have to trust in it for salvation and for sanctification. It's like a chair. If you stand and you watch a chair, you know it exists and it's made to hold you if you sit on it. So you can either stand next to it and describe it or you can trust it and go sit on it. You see, your action by going and sitting on the chair shows that you not only believe that it exists, that it is real, but that you trust in it. And just like that, your actions, your deeds will prove that your faith is real. True faith, biblical faith in God is trust in God. Saved only by faith. We humans cannot save ourselves. We are only saved by faith through God's grace. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We are all sinful humans with a fleshly nature in us. You might have sinned a lot, maybe a little, but still, sin is sin. You might have lied, you might have stolen something, committed some other kind of sin. And now when you compare yourself to other people, you feel like, all right, hmm, you're not that bad. But you see, that's the problem. You who are not perfect, compare yourself to other humans that are also not perfect. We have to compare ourselves to God who is perfect and holy. And you see, He is so holy that even your most righteous, perfect deeds are like filthy rags to Him. Isaiah 64 verse 6 says, We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. And then when you die, the God of the universe, God Almighty, will judge you for everything you've done on this temporary world. Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. So imagine you've died and you're standing in front of God Almighty, the judge of the world. And He shows you all the sin you've done, every evil deed you've committed. And you go and you say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for giving for everything I've done, for lying, stealing, cheating, for all of it. 
you know, even a normal judge would then say, well, of course you should be sorry, but you broke the law. I can't just let you go. You are guilty. And I need to punish you. I am a righteous judge. I can't just let you go. That's what God would say. He can't just let you go and just enter his kingdom. Galatians 5 verse 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you. As I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then there are some people who believe, no, God takes your good deeds and your bad deeds and He outweighs them. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Your best deeds are not even good enough for God. And on that day, judgment day, God will judge you for all your sinful deeds. You are already guilty now, here on earth. But that's the beauty of it, because now Jesus came and He says, I'll take it, I'll take the punishment, all the sin that He's committed, that punishment that you should give Him, Father, I'll take it on myself and I will die in His place. And then the judge accepts it, God the Father accepts it, because that's why He sent His Son in the first place. And then He declares you as free. If you accept it. You see, that's the gospel. It took one man to bring sin into the world, Adam. And God is righteous. So He required one man to nullify it, to repair it, to repair His relationship with humankind. Romans 5 verse 12 says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. And verse 18 says, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, Grace abounded all the more. Now listen carefully. So that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, this is so beautiful because God declares you as righteous. The moment you repent, you believe and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior while you're here on this temporary world. And if you don't do it while you're here, it'll be too late and you won't be saved. And don't get confused here because there's only one way that you can be saved and that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus says in John 14 verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Acts 4 verse 12 says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. You see, God gives you time and free choice while you're here on earth to either choose Him and the light or to choose this sinful temporary world and all its pleasures, the darkness. So if you believe, and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you turn away, you repent from your sinful lifestyle and you turn to Christ and live for Him, then you will be saved. That is true faith. And when you do it with all your heart and soul, everything that you are, when you cling to Jesus Christ, you live for Him, He will also change you. He will give you His Spirit. You will be a new creation. And the Holy Spirit will seal you until the day of redemption. Ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14 says, In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed 
with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory. So now with the Holy Spirit in you, you are not the same anymore. You are a new creation. Your spiritual eyes have been opened up. You have been spiritually reborn. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And so now, with your new spiritual nature, with the Holy Spirit in you, you can communicate and talk to God directly because God is spirit, according to John 4 verse 24. And not only that, you are also now not just a new creation, but a child of God. He is your Father. John 1 verse 12 says, But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. This is what it means to have true faith in God. Because there is a change in you. There's no way that you can be the same anymore once you had a real encounter with the God of the universe. Because He changed you and He sent His Spirit in you. And that's why you don't want to, to live in sin anymore. Now your whole desire is to live according to God's Word and to please Him. Galatians 5 verse 24 says, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. So now, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will automatically produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit, meaning good deeds. And that brings us to the next point. Faith without works is fake. You can't trick God. He knows what real faith is. You know, today we have so many fake things in the world. We have fake clothes, fake jewelry, and even these days a lot of fake news. We have fake hair, fake electronics, and even fake social media profiles. But you know, when it comes to God, you can't fake it until you make it. No one can trick God. He sees right through you. James 2 verse 14 says, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Meaning faith without works is fake. Now some people think here that James is saying the opposite of Paul, but he's not. Paul says in Romans 3 verse 28, For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. And Paul is right. And James is also right. You see, James is not disagreeing with Paul. James is explaining what true faith really is. And he's saying that if you have real faith, it will automatically show in your deeds. Meaning your fruit, your deeds will show that your faith is real. James further says in verse 26, For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. You know, that's the biggest sign of fake faith. When someone who claims to be a Christian keeps on living in sin without feeling guilty or bad about it, and they just use, I'm saved by grace and Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins so I can go and keep on sinning. A license to sin. Don't lie to yourself. You're deceiving yourself. That's not true faith. If you have true faith, then you will feel regret, remorse. You will go to God and ask Him to forgive you after every single time that you have sinned. So when we're talking about real Christians and fake Christians, you identify them by their fruit. That person that brags about his drinking, how wasted he was last night, and at the same time he's saying that he's a Christian. And that girl who keeps on swearing and cussing, every second word that comes out of her mouth is foul. And she says, she's a Christian. If you don't feel bad, if you don't feel regret, 
because of your sin, your drinking, your swearing, every form of evil that you do, if you don't feel regret, if you don't feel that you need to go to God and ask for forgiveness, that's fake faith. Faith is not an excuse to keep on sinning. Paul says in Romans 6 verse 1, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were buried, therefore, with Him by baptism into death. In order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For some reason, there's this group of people who believe, man, I can keep on sinning because I have faith in Jesus. I believe that He died on the cross for all my past, present and future sins, so it's okay for me to go on and keep on living in sin. That is fake faith. You're just using it, manipulating it, believing something that is not true and you want to believe it because then it gives you a free ticket to go and sin. That's not true faith and God will not declare you as righteous because you've never really accepted Him as your Lord and Savior in the first place. True regeneration, becoming a child of God means that you've been given the Holy Spirit and you've been made a new creation. Your thoughts are different. You have been renewed. You have the Holy Spirit in you that now leads you forward and that shows you the truth of life itself. That there's no way that you can be the same who you were yesterday, doing the same sinful things over and over and over. No, you turn away from it to God. 180 degree turn. And now you follow Jesus Christ. And your aim now is to live holy and to become more like Jesus. If you want to use your fake faith as a license to sin, it's evil. James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will exalt you. Please hear me today. This is so important to understand because there's a watered down gospel being preached in many churches today. If you have real faith, you love God, you serve Him with your whole heart, soul and mind, with everything that you are, and you don't want to live in sin anymore. It is impossible to keep on living in sin without even worrying about it, caring about it. God is not mocked. Hebrews 10 verse 26 says, For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Now I've said it in many of my other sermons, but I'll say it again. There's a difference between keeping on living in sin without caring about it and then sinning at times because you're not perfect and you still struggle with sin. There's a big difference between those two. Even when you try your best, you might fall at times because we are not perfect yet. We will only be one day when we are with God. Galatians 5 verse 16 says, But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You see, the key to overcoming sin now as a new Christian is to understand the new spiritual nature in you. How to let the Holy Spirit guide you in your emotions, your thoughts, in all your deeds, in everything that you do. You should now walk with the Spirit, in the Spirit, every day. Your faith will be tested. When you become a Christian, it doesn't automatically mean that life will just be easy. Life will still be tough, but now you have a whole road of sanctification where you grow spiritually. And you need to know that your faith will be tested.
And you can prove that your faith is real by how you handle difficult situations. James 1 verse 2 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. You see, your faith can also grow stronger. Remember, Jesus talked about those of little faith. And Paul talks about babes in Christ. So faith is not just about being declared righteous, and that's fine. No, now your life actually starts. Now it's about sanctification, about walking with God and letting Him lead you so that you will live in God's will and accomplish His purpose for your life. And you will be tested. 1 Peter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Now listen to this. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Will your faith still stand? Will you still follow Jesus Christ even through difficult times? Most of us had a hard time during COVID. Is your faith still strong? It's easy to worship and to follow God if everything is going well. But will your faith stand if you lose your job or if you lose a loved one? This is when your faith is really tested on this temporary world. But if your faith stands, then you will receive your reward. Then you will be with Jesus Christ for all eternity. Your reward is the salvation of your soul. Verse 8 says, Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Listen to me very carefully now because this is so important. Faith, real faith, is not a jump into the dark like many people say. It is not a jump into the unknown. It is repenting, believing and trusting in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. With all that you are, your heart, your mind and your soul, everything that you are, you follow Jesus Christ and you love Him. And then you read, you study and you follow God's Word. You live it to become more and more like Jesus Christ. Do you have real faith? Do you have assurance of salvation? If you don't, you need to get it before it is too late. Make sure that your heart is right with God, that you will have eternal life. And to help you with it, please watch these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.